What kind of oil? I use uh, linseed oil. Cut it with turpentine first okay, good. for penetration. There it is. Oh, I was gonna grab some um, some walnuts, but this is a, a stain that I made out of walnuts shells or the husks on the shell, and uh, makes a really good stain. And it puts a nice uh, tone to it. I'm gonna paint the back of it too. The paint I did not make. I use, uh, <clears throat> I like acrylic because it's flexible. Mm -hmm. And uh, and since I'm using a water-based stain, I would like a water-based paint as well. This is the hunter end. A lot of grain really comes out. It, it does. It, well, ash, the, yeah. the open grain of ash really pulls in the stain. And you, you think you're going through the growth ring, all those, uh, those, those uh, essentially growth rings, right? Right here. That's what yep. those are. Yep. So you're picking up every single one. Yeah, which helps to show how in the building of the bow you use those growth rings kind of like you use uh, leaves in a leaf spring um, they stack up the same way yeah so you can see how much you, so you can make it equal yeah you're also using them to count nice for that. Guide. So you, yeah you have to count evenly on both sides of the center right so you get a nice yeah. even bend and then of course if there might be a um, you know, a stiffer piece part of the limb that has little to do with the number of grain layers, but more in how it grew that particular spot. But those sort of um, differences get fixed with the tillering process, which I think we pro we, we covered that in the early days of the operation. Mm -hmm. So after the, um, the stain has a chance to dry, and the paint as well, we will um, treat the whole thing with oil. What kind of oil? I use uh, linseed oil with, uh, um, I cut it with turpentine first okay, for penetration and then kind of build it up, you know, and back off of the turpentine as we build it up. Right. This, which they call the back of the bow, um, I'm not going to worry too much about staining it because I'm going to paint it here in a minute. I like that walnut stain. It works real good, and you can use um, butternut as well. See, it doesn't stay as dark as it was because you wipe it off, but it does pick up that grain. Anyway, that's that stained. This is uh, the arrow rest. And I made that out of a piece of deer antler, right with a, um, there was a tine coming off of the main beam of the antler. So I cut it and, and polished it up and I hit it with a spot of glue and so it didn't, doesn't move around on us. And I've got it grooved here, so I'm going to cut some, some leather thong and wrap it on good. And then um, probably do that after I paint the front and... Um, it makes it pretty nice uh, if you've shot without them before you probably experience that little bite on the side of your hand from the feather mm -hmm. <laughs> zipping you on the way by <clears throat> this prevents that okay just come up with a color scheme mm. that's interesting well what did you have envisioned when you were actually what it's a hunting <clears throat> bow and what did you kind of envision when you were yeah um well i want it to be subdued but not necessarily camouflaged in a, in a traditional i mean modern day camouflage pattern 
but um, subdued and perhaps something a little more prehistoric in, in its design. Paleo? Yeah, that's good. Well, yeah. The Paleo Bow. Paleo Bow. Actually, <laughs> I don't think the Paleo people knew what a bow was. No, they didn't. They were still using at laddles. Yeah. <laughs> Fisticuffs. 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 <laughs> they were jumping out of trees and strangling animals, grabbing yeah. them by the horns. Yeah. Dropping yeah. rocks and dropping rocks. Yep. Yeah. And Chasing them off cliffs. So you th thinking yeah. one color, or are you thinking like a? Well, I think I'm going to lay down a um, base color of a green, and then I think I'm going to do a pattern of probably what I like is um, porcupine trail. Oh yeah, and it's a fun just design it's or motif it's basically a swirly line that goes down and it's got a circle in each bay you know and, it's, and if you have ever seen a porcupine trail in the snow mm -hmm. they waddle when they walk and, and drag their, their tail and their tail makes this thing so it's uh -huh. really kind of cute um so oh, i'm mixing up a muddy green kind of a color. is it turpentine no. This year? No, this, this is water. It's, uh, this is acrylic paint, so it's water based. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, that is definitely a um, earth tone, almost like dark earth. Yeah, like olive. Yeah. Not all drab, but. This is a good. Good time of year to be inspired by color. Now, now, get some yellow going. Let's see, I'm just gonna freehand this because it makes it funner. I have to expect nothing else. Now this is going to be a porcupine trail? Yeah. I never claimed to be a grand painter. There's an ochre that I like. This is linseed oil that um, has some turpentine in it, not a, a lot at this point because I've added oil to it. Is this just the raw or boiled? This is boiled. Um, boiled linseed oil will harden mm -hmm. and uh, raw linseed oil won't. It turns things black. Um, it tends to. Or, um, or moldish, I should say. I've had issues with linseed oil and black mold. Not huge, but like when I do like a, anything that's going to get slightly damp, yeah, I'll get like this black trace of it's it's like a black mold. All I know is slightly. the raw linseed oil is recommended for stuff outdoors, and boiled linseed oil for like thresholds and stuff. Yeah, stuff like that. But it, I mean, something that lives outdoors. This is going to be living indoors mostly. You think? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Nobody's going to leave this so. out in the rain. I would hope.
It's got a nice smell to it, too. Actually. Yeah, yeah. I like linseed. Oh, linseed. And, you know, the more coats that it gets over the years, the more of a luster it'll get, too, and, and everything. Um, but, but this is definitely uh, serviceable as is. All right, so I'm going to cut a thong for to wrap on uh, this uh, arrow wrist. Yes. All right, so from that little disc, we got a nice piece of can't catch it thong. That the thongs for thongs. Yeah. That's an interesting. That's, when, a, that's an interesting transformation of the word. Yeah. <laughs> What'd you do with Brian? Oh, I watched Make him. Watched his. He showed me his thong. <laughs> yeah. Making thongs. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. That's right. How about that? I planned that. Sure. Cord. And draw it right up underneath there and stay there. And it will do that. Did you say what your... Oh, uh, that's a uh, leather punch that I made out of a chainsaw file. So you have to soften the steel first by heating it up red, you know, really, really hot, critical temperature uh, when it loses magnet, magnetization. So, is that a word? Making them up. It is now. Yeah. <laughs> and then you let it cool as slow as you possibly can and the steel will be soft. So then you can drill it out and and do all the shaping and stuff and then you have to uh, of course harden it back up again and temper it and, uh, Bringing it to the, the back of the bow. On the yeah. Double. Is that a square? Yep. Not a granny knot. Not a granny knot. Granny knot, they come out opposite. Yep. And they don't hold nearly as well. No. So. Sorry, granny. There it is. Rob. Nice. One long string with what they call a bite here. Or Okay. 